Hey y'all, Grandma Rose here. Have you started getting your seed catalogs in yet? I have. Actually, I've, I've been getting them in for almost a month. Maybe even longer. I got one yesterday that prompted me to make this video. It reminded me that I had said I was going to make a video comparing hybrids to GMOs. What is the difference between hybrid seeds and GMO seeds? Now that the catalogs are starting to come in, and we're starting to look at what we want to plant, what we want to buy to put in our garden next year, now is probably a really good time to think about what is a GMO and is this something that we need to be worried about. So let me start here. I'm going to start first of all, not just what is, what is a hybrid or what is a GMO, but what is pollination? Actually, what happens when a plant is pollinated? Well, the pollen from one plant, or even the same plant, lands on the stigma of the flower. Now, the pollen is the male part, and the stigma is the female part, and goes down into the ovary at the bottom. And in the ovary, that's where the seeds are. That's where the, not, that's where the seeds are going to develop. But at this point, before pollination, what's in the ovary are eggs. Just think about our ovaries, or your dog's ovaries, or your cow's ovaries, or your chicken's ovaries, whatever. The female produces eggs, and the male produces sperm, and that is what's going on in plants. The pollen germinates and becomes sperm, and then the two come together, and it creates an organism with the full set of chromosomes. And that's what happens at that point then it starts growing and in a plant it develops into a seed or several seeds depending on on what the plant is so that's what pollination is but we probably all knew that and we probably all learned that when we were in elementary school but maybe not or maybe we've actually forgotten what exactly is going on there but that's what it is in a nutshell so what is hybrid what is hybridization so what is the difference between a regular say heirloom or open pollinated plant seed and a hybrid plant or seed well in an open pollinated or an heirloom which is essentially an heirloom is an open pollinated plant that existed before world war ii so if anything has been um, in production for that long then it's considered an heirloom Anything after that is still the same type of plant, but it's called open pollinated instead. Now, you might not have known that. So really, heirloom and open pollinated are interchangeable terms. Heirloom just means it's older. The plant's been in existence for longer. So a hybrid seed is what is produced when pollen from one variety lands on the stigma of a flower from another variety. So this is not going to happen within flowers, or on the same plant even. But it's going to take two different plants of two different varieties within the same species. And when that happens, the pollen from the two different, two different varieties will come together and they'll mix up, as they do, and it'll create what is called a hybrid seed. Well, that's well and good, right? It should be good because you hear about hybrid vigor and animals that have hybrid vigor are stronger and more productive in a lot of things. But what's the problem with it? The problem with it is then if you save the seeds, then the seeds will not grow true to the mother plant the next year. So they might, in one year, the first generation after they've been produced, which is called the F1 generation, don't need to know that, don't, that doesn't matter, but in the F1 generation, which is the first generation after hybridization, the seeds produce the traits that, that are desirable or whatever the mixed up traits are going to be. After that, if you try to save the seeds, then they're not going to come true to type. They're not going to have the same traits that that first generation of hybrid seeds have. So if you're buying hybrid seeds from a seed company, then they've got you hooked because you have, to, you have to continue to buy that hybrid seed 
season after season after season. That could be a problem. I mean, what if you live, well, let's say what happened, what happens if there, if there's a, a terrible event and we cannot buy seeds anymore from our seed companies? Whatever happens, all we have is the seeds that we can save. Well, if all you've been growing is hybrid seed, then you don't know what you're going to get from, from year to year to year. Eventually, you may be able to what is called stabilize a hybrid. We don't really need to know about stabilizing a hybrid, but just know that a hybrid seed only occurs in two varieties within the same species. In general, two species cannot reproduce. Now, there are a couple of, a couple of exceptions, like a mule is produced when a horse and a donkey uh, cross. That's not seeds at all. We're not talking about plants there, but that is that it be, would be a cross-species hybrid. Let me give you one example. I don't know the exact plant, whatever this is, but I learned about this when I was taking botany. But what happens if the same species is separated by mountain range over time, over a long period of time, you can imagine how much time it would take for a mountain range to grow up. Or what if, how, well, let's say, well, what if, what if a seed were um, eaten by a bird and the bird flew off someplace and flew to an island. And then that seed grew and it would produce the plant, whatever it was, but that plant's isolated from the original population. Does that automatically make it a different species? What happens if you if you would take the seed from or the pollen from those plants that are on the island and you take it back and put it on the flowers that are on the mainland? There's a good chance that they will still pollinate. And even though botanists have decided that those are different species because at this point they don't look very much alike anymore. But it turns out that they're actually two different subsets of the same species. And they just didn't know it. And that's why in a lot of cases now you hear about people renaming species and putting them where something that used to be a separate species now becomes part of another species. And that's generally what's happened is they've discovered through the uh, genetic techniques that they have now, mapping, mapping DNA, mapping chromosomes, that they can find out that there actually are zero or hardly any differences that matter. And that's when they will put a species back in, in with another one and group them together. So enough about hybrids. We understand what a hybrid is. A hybrid happens when, oh gosh, um, any kind of pollinator transfers pollen from one plant to another. What types of pollination are there? And how can pollen, how can pollen be transferred from one plant to another? What we hear about wind pollination and we hear a whole lot about bees. Well, think about what other insects are pollinators. Just about any insect that could land on a flower and move to another flower can transfer pollen from one to the other. A butterfly or a moth, a spider. Well, a spider's not an insect, but we consider it the same kind of thing. It's a bug. So we're going to be pollinated by wind, which we all know about wind, pollinate by, by bugs. What else? What are some other things that can pollinate? Bats. Thought about bats? Well, I think bats are known for pollinate, pollinating a lot of cactus, and there are other, other flowers, I believe, that bats pollinate too. Birds. Hummingbirds. And there's other birds that pollinate. When the hummingbird puts its beak into a, into a flower to suck up the nectar, it's getting, it's getting pollen on, on its feathers, just like on the, the hairs on a bee, or on a moth, or on a butterfly. What about water? Have you ever thought about water being a pollinator? Yeah. Plants that grow in water, aquatic plants, the, uh, a lot of them don't have, have their flowers right at the water level. And pollen can float across the water from one, from one plant to another plant. So plants can be water pollinated. But another pollinator that we don't think about are people. 
we are pollinators. When we take a, a Q-tip or a, a paintbrush and take pollen from one plant and put it on, on the pistil of another plant, then we're pollinators. So there's all different kind of pollinators and not just bees and wind. So let's think about that for a minute. Now I want to show you something to talk about hybrids and how hybrids are you you are stuck you're stuck with the with the plant companies with the seed companies but if you want to continue that hybrid and that's a fact but I want to show you something that I discovered this catalog I've gotten it a couple of years and I don't believe I've ever ordered anything from it but I think one of the reasons I haven't ordered anything from it is because it uh, has a whole lot of hybrids in it and I have been uh, looking for heirloom seeds and open pollinated seeds but I discovered something when I was I decided this is one of the first catalogs that I got and I decided to go ahead and look and see what was in it if you see in here look at this page you didn't see my circles on it well these are hybrid tomato seeds and let me see if I can get this one in here really close that one at the top okay I don't know if I held that long enough but what this is is a Dixie red hybrid and these are tomatoes for hot humid climates I live in a hot humid climate this tomato and there's two or three others on the same page have been hybridized to be resistant to blight and I had a terrible problem with blight last year. So I'm going to order this seed, this type of seed, the Dixie Red Hybrid. And also there's a Florida 91 Hybrid that has the same uh, resistance to blight. That's not going to be the only tomatoes that I grow, but I'm going to try growing them. Because last year I had a terrible, terrible tomato harvest. Blight just did me in. So I'm going to try these hybrids. And yes, I might be hooked to hybrid seeds for a while, but if it keeps me in tomatoes, if I actually get some tomatoes to harvest, then I'm going to be happy with that. Okay, so there's what hybrids are. So what's your GMO? It really makes me wonder.